Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been on, and I'm so excited about tonight. But then don't I say that every night? So tonight is no different. Uh, and you know how we do. I would encourage you to go ahead and um, share with your friends. I'm going to share on my um, uh, personal page. And um, if I can figure it out, like I always do. Um, hey, Cassandra. Hey, Danielle. Thank you all for watching tonight. Uh, it's going to be a great conversation. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I have one of my very special friends on tonight. Good. She got, she comes with some power and some letters behind her name. Um, so we're excited and I'm, um, just give me a second to share it and paste. Okay. Post. And we're going to get this ball rolling. So. I hope y'all have had, a, like I said, a good week so far. Today is Thursday, baby. This is, you know, I like to say it is Friday Eve, baby. And I got <laughs> two more Fridays and then I'm all for the year. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's get it together. Oh, do we have to um, hello, Danielle. It's nice to have you on tonight. And it's nice to have... Uh, everybody watching, even if you're watching by replay, I am Sonia Krull. I am the transition coach. I am a licensed clinical social worker. Uh, I deal with everything transitional, whether you are moving from one job to the next, someone in your family has died, you're graduating from uh, high school, college, you're retiring and don't know how to move forward. I help you move to the next place that you are supposed to be in life. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about transition, and we're going to talk about a little different. Um, tonight, we are talking about self-care, and you know, you know, we don't believe in self-care. You know, we, we sort of believe that that's kind of selfish to want to spend some time with yourself, and you want to say no to some people. You know, sometimes people will call that, as they say, clutch your pearls. That's wrong. You're not supposed to do that. You're being selfish, but you know what? Tonight, I beg to differ with you, um, and my guest begs to differ with you as well. I am so honored tonight to have Dr. Kimberly Bennett uh, with us tonight. She is just, uh, just an amazing human. Let me just start there. Um, she, her knowledge base is just phenomenal. Uh, I thought I love to learn, baby. Mm -mm. She got me beat at least by 100. <laughs> so I remember the first time, I'm going to give you her bio, but I got to tell you this story. I remember the first time I met her and one of my coworkers, she was my boss's boss. So one of my coworkers said, it's not that she's not paying you any attention, but she's always learning something. So she's going to always have her ear pods in and always listening to some podcast. And let me tell you, she was helping me with my computer. We were getting new computers and she was trying to help me save some stuff. And what does she have in her ear? Her podcast. She was talking to me with one hand and in the other ear, it was a podcast. And I'm thinking, okay, they're right. She's always learning. And I, hey, I can't fault a sister for that. But let me uh, go ahead and introduce my fabulous guest for tonight, uh, Dr. Kimberly Bennett, uh, with over 26 years of leading, coaching, and training staff, students, and clients. Uh, currently serving as a student support service director at a local uh, school district. She has a strong community and social services professional. Uh, uh, she's a strong community and social service professional with a doctorate in education. So you know she has is. She ain't coming just off the streets. Um, her focus is on educational leadership and administration. She has multiple certificates in diversity, uh, uh, equity, inclusion, personal and uh, executive coaching, health and wellness. Uh, she has a dual certificates in adult and youth uh, mental health first aid. So, hey, I'm excited. You know, she's already on my boat. Um, crisis counseling, 
um, in addition to educational leadership uh, certifications. Uh, she's a lifelong learner and she's passionate about connecting with people and sharing resources. Absolutely. I, I know that to be true firsthand. As you know already, she has a doctorate. She has an educational specialist. Uh, she has a master's in education and she has a bachelor's. So I'm so excited. And she has a list. And when I say a list, she has a list of certifications and licenses. So she's almost a LCSW. She <laughs> almost, she this close. So welcome, Dr. Bennett. How are you doing tonight? I am doing fabulous. Let me tell you, I, the admiration is mutual. I love you, Beth. Love you. Love you. Oh, thank you. Me. I'm always on the other side watching you. And now it's so funny to be here being interviewed. It, it's surreal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you already got Ayana, A-Y-A-N, Anna. Oh, that's my bonus daughter. Come on. Well, she's watching then. That's okay, baby. girl. All right. Hey, Nikki, thank you for joining in. I'm so excited oh, to have you. My daughter, her. Just, uh, she graduated um, from Kennesaw. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Is it in social work, though? It is not, but she's brilliant nonetheless. Okay, well, and we'll let her slide. Brain we'll and beauty. Okay. So yes. I forgot to tell y'all this one thing. Dr. Bennett is an AKA. I won't hold that against her. Um, you know, we love her just the same. But it's a sisterhood all the way around. I love that's my right. Of all colors, uh, I love women. All together, we're just a sisterhood. That's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So, ladies, if you have questions, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I probably said two or three times. Go ahead, put it in the chat. Hey Renee, thank you for joining you. Miss AKA. You got hey, some Yes. I saw that 50th celebration. See, I can't switch from being on the other side because I'm still thinking I'm reading. I'm like, hey, Renee, I'm ready to talk in the chat. I told you this is laid back and we're going to get it going. Oh, distinguished and professional. Here. No, no, just be yourself. So how are you? How are you handling this trans, uh, this, uh, this, this COVID thing? It's been, seemed like it's been going on forever. <sighs> March 13th, 2020. I'll never forget, we were sitting in that conference room waiting for Kemp to make an announcement, uh, change our world. Yep. I darn near wore a hazmat suit to work. <laughs> and you know I did. You remember that? I have come a long way since. I am so proud of that mask. I don't know what to do. It's messing up my makeup. I'm getting bumps around my face. It's just crazy. You know what? I, um because I... In both positions, I'm responsible for that process, more so here in my, in my current role. I just follow the data, the local data, and I look at those numbers and where we are. When we start to surge, I start to increase my mitigation factors. And when we're not, because I, I can't live in fear. I just, yes. I got to say, he's got me. Yes. I'm having some sense. But yes. I just can't because I mean, I'm like wiping down stuff. At one point, I realized, did you just soak your fruit in bleach? <laughs> I like, so yeah, so wow, yeah, it's been a crazy ride. I am looking for it to be over. Uh, but like you, uh, I can't live in fear, but I'm not going to be crazy either. So, you know, when I'm about around a bunch of people, whether they're kids or adults, I'm putting on a mask and I really would like for you to do the same. Yes, yes, so, I do wear my mask, but I will say, I know you ask all your guests that and my answer before today, before a couple hours before this was, no close family and friends have had it, but I just found mm -hmm. out um, two relatives have it. My, yeah. One of my little cousins, she, little sweetie pie, and her father have it. So I'm um, prayerful. I know they're going to bounce back and be fine. So they'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, it, it's no rhyme or reason. Some people get it even after giving getting the shot, but I am still uh, an advocate of of the shot. And, and I'm going to get my booster. I'm just, I'm just doing it. And you know, some people, you know, they have their different opinions and I'm cool with that. But either way, whatever you do, just wear your mask around me, boo. I, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, I'm but like, anyway, oh, go ahead. 
I, I feel like that too. You have the right to choose what you want to do. Um, it's all about your choices. Right, right, right. Amen, girl. If you know, hey Pam, your boy, the girl on here. Oh, that's my road dog. Hey Pam. <laughs> Let's get started. So, so tell us a little bit about your your educational journey. You have been in education for a minute. Uh, now, did you know when you were in college and, and high school that you wanted to go into education, that you wanted to be a teacher? You know what? My mother told me I could do anything I wanted to do, and I believed her. Yeah. And, and so that's why I'm always in school, because it was just last year. I was like, should I go to law school? <laughs> And I'm not undecided yet. Now, don't laugh. I know you're not. I know. Because I'm like, do I feel like studying at the law school? I love school. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm still teaching. Mm -hmm. I love being around books. I love learning. So I could never narrow down a major. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to be around children. Um, I, I did not like high school. I hated high school. Uh -huh absolutely hated high school. I hated high school students. Um, yeah. I hated everything about high school. Did I say that with enough? enough? Yeah, I think, yeah, 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 we got that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I was a t the student that helped grade papers and mm -hmm. all that. I knew I wanted to be in education. But when I was in college, I thought I was going into either social work or psychology because I had a mm -hmm. social worker, uh, Mr. Frank Salgamoser, that just changed my world. And mm -hmm. I was going to be like Frank Salgamoser. But it's another thing when it's time for you to graduate and they don't have your um, field experience. Uh -huh. That means, well, if you stay another semester and you could, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So we started arranging things and I did a um, student teaching opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love these babies. So I don't believe in any mistakes or accidents. Yes. So I think that, I think that's where I was supposed to be and it happened the way that it did for a reason. So I did a lot of child, when I graduated, I actually had a bachelor's degree, but I was working in childcare. Wow. Okay. I was working in a daycare very much underpaid because yeah. you know, does not pay. Right. I worked my way up to um, be an assistant director. And then I went back, I moved to Georgia from New York and Buffalo, New York, and um, went to Mercer to get my certification, my add on um, for um, elementary grades or mm -hmm. grades. And I did that for a little bit. And then um Best principal in the world, Betty Robinson, who died by suicide, but um, impacted me. And she's like, you know, we need more women of color in leadership. And I like there was a situation in the classroom and she's like, I like the way you handle that. And she's like, I want to take you under my wing. And you know, you already know how I like to work late. Pam knows how I like to, she like dragged me out of the building. But. Miss Robinson and I would stay in the building late, and I thought it was like a treat because we would be the last two people in the building. My husband teased me. He was like, you know, that's something you'll never hear me say. I can't stop working. Like, I can't turn my brain off because I, I love what I do. And um, I enjoyed that because I was like, oh, it's a treat. I get to stay in the building. So. Wow. Wow. So you went from, were you a second grade teacher? I was a I was a kindergarten teacher, first grade. I did teach second grade for a hot minute, and um, realized I prefer the younger grade. And okay. I, I did third grade for summer school, and then I was an assistant principal, principal, and then I went to the county office and I became a pretend social worker. Yeah, you did a good job at pretending too. Thank hey, you. Dr. Taylor, Dr. Say, Taylor said is uh, you are a doctor workaholic. Uh, hello, Linda. How are you? Thank you for joining. So now, when did you decide to make the transition, even though you're still in education, when did you start focusing on wellness? How did that come about? Funny that you said, hi, Dr. Taylor. Uh-huh. Dr. Taylor, 
uh, when are you going to stop taking classes and start doing what you're taking? <laughs> oh, yeah, she, she doesn't mince words. <laughs> she's like, you got enough school going on. I think you got enough education going on. And I think I was I was talking to someone about this today. It might have been you about or and I was when I was working with a client and we were talking about procrastination mm -hmm. and perfectionism. And when you find people are perfectionists and they keep putting things off because they have to get it just right, that's fear. That mm -hmm. their act, their their fear to their fear of failure. Mm -hmm. And that was just me fear. I had fear of failing. Yeah, I wanted yeah. everything to be just right. You, I'm guilt guilty. You, yeah, guilty. yeah. I'm guilty. I didn't want to come on here because I was like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. I haven't had enough of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody was talking to me. I was talking to, I think I was talking to Pam about that, about doing private practice. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ready yet. I don't know if I'm good. Enough. And I talk to people all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's that fear thing. Just like, mm, I'm, I'm that, good at so-and-so. Because, and I hate, you know, I find myself here lately and I, I almost hate it, but it's everything starting. I'm like, oh, because of black this and black that. And I hate that I do that. But as black women, it's that we have to be better than we have to do just, you know, better than everyone else. You know, because as black women, you know, you're not a black male, you're not a white male, and you're not a white woman. So you have to have it up to this level. Correct. 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 Doc Dylan says that you were born ready, lady. Okay, then. You exactly. were born ready. Wow. Her Tell us who that's is the Pope right there. That's the fixer. If Yo, you she's want, the fixer. If you want to uh, win an election or do something in the political arena, call her. We did a talk show with her. We had her uh -huh. on. Uh, she was on, I think, maybe about six months ago, talking about. I, I was watching it. Yeah, yeah. I would encourage you all if you all didn't see that. I think we were talking about racism. I think we were talking about yes. that in the school yes. system. So go check that out, and also check out Dr. Taylor has a book that is. Yeah, I was looking right say buy that book. It's a powerhouse, particularly if you're in education and you're trying to figure out how to navigate. All of these dynamics, I, a lot of educators that I work with are trying to figure out how do I teach in this classroom without mentioning critical race theory? How do I teach without mentioning diversity, equity, and inclusion? They give you the roadmap right now. Yes, yes, they really do. They bring they really book. Yes. over, I think they said 70 years of education. I don't remember mm -hmm. the numbers, but it's a, a hundred years, it's a whole lot of years of education yes. and knowledge. Yes. I'm yes. quoting him and her every day. I was on the phone today telling somebody that dog won't hunt. Mm. He, they, Dr. Taylor they, used to say research. that. They got the research mm. and they 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 list it in the back of the book. So you don't think they're making up anything. All of their uh, it's, it's in, in the book. Plain English. It, it's not, you know, where you can't yeah. understand it. Yeah, get the yes. I would uh, get the book. It'll be worth and and you know what? Get your so that you can uh, give one away. Hey, uh, Johnny, thank you for joining tonight. But let's talk a little bit about you. Come on back. You know, we only have an hour. You know, my ADHD kicked in. I was trying yeah, to I saw that it. book. <laughs> That's all you looking for, that book. Tell <laughs> us a little bit how you got into wellness. So I, when I was a principal, um, I just recently divorced, I think it was about 2012, I was at a teacher of the year banquet. And I remember I left out and it was raining and went home. And next day I was sick. I was so sick. I thought I had a cold. Then I thought it was maybe pneumonia. I, I didn't know what it was, but my ch in my chest, I just could not breathe. And this went on for a couple weeks. Long and short, I wound up having to go to the Mayo Clinic um, for weeks. They didn't know what was going on. They thought it was something called Charles Shurg syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling them, no, I don't think it's that. Now, these doctors telling me, get your affairs in order. Get Now, I'm a single parent. I'm like, I can't leave. You know, where am I going to leave my son? You know, 
My family loved me to death, but I've spoiled this boy rotten. And they're like, ain't nobody taking that monster. <laughs> You've created a mess. I don't know what you're doing with that. So I was like, Lord, I, I, I'm ready to go. So um, I, I was really ill, but they could not figure out what was going on. I left the mail clinic, I kid you not, with no less than 26 labels and a bag of medications. I mean, when I tell you I was on every medication in the world, I blew up. I mean, my weight, my face was swollen. My husband that I'm married to now, I remember prior to that, we were dating for a little bit and I saw him later on and he saw me, I saw him and I took off running because I didn't want him to see me. I was like, oh, he can't see me. I'm walking around here looking like the clumps. He can't see me. And he laughed. He took that a whole different way. But anyway, they didn't know what was going on. So I wanted to go and get some natural. I wanted to figure out what was going on. So I went to this place called Progressive Health, which it may be natural and holistic, but it's a whole paycheck. Yeah. So. I started researching online and doing it a little bit over time. And so over time, I started piecemealing my own little thing together. And I thought, hmm, I could just pay to go to school and figure this out myself and get certified and be my own doctor. And then my, I could help my family. So it started out with me thinking, well, I can help myself for the amount of money that I'm paying someone else to do so that's how it really started is me just getting curious i'm just a really curious person so i just take a class in anything and, but that's how it started for me trying to figure out what was going on with me and wow evolved. you know the, the buzzword now is mindfulness uh uh and uh meditation and uh tell us a little bit tell us what is mindfulness and why is it so important right now? So mindfulness basically is how you want to show up for life. It's like you want to be in the pre in the present moment. It's how you want to show up, and it's it really shouldn't be a buzzword. It should be a way of life. Yeah, it yeah. should really be a way of life. And normally, like my husband, he's a perfect example. He listens, but he's like. You know, you hear people kind of, roll, you know, blow you off or roll their eyes. People of color sometimes, some of us will do that. Mm -hmm. But we more than anyone else should really be paying attention because mindfulness is being in the present moment, the here and now focusing on okay. just getting still and in touch with yourself and just calming down, not worrying about what was going on in the past, not worrying about the future and just calming down. And I'm extremely ADHD. So my mind is always racing, always. And when you have all that going on, it's not good for your insides. It's not good for your nervous system. So how do you, can you give us, can you tell us how you do that? Can you walk us through that? You don't have to do an exercise now, but can you, or unless you want to, but can you walk us, how do you do that? So I will tell you this, um, there's guided meditation. You can do, for example, you've heard of the apps called Calm, mm -hmm. and which Calm is one that's really popular, mm -hmm. but it's also very expensive. So there are some others that I'll share with you that are free. And um, I don't know if Ashley's on here, but Ashley, there are a lot of people that are on there that um, do them in their free, like Insight is a free one. Um, Shine is a free one. And I have a link to that. Um, I don't know if I share that with you. And that one, you can cater. It, it'll, um, you'll type in what you want and it'll give you like a personal mantra. Um, can I ask you, so is mindfulness and meditation the same thing? No, one, so meditation is the practice of mindfulness. Oh, okay. Yeah, so one is the result of the other. And I have, I can do a mindfulness activity with you. Okay. And it doesn't, and I'm gonna read it, because I like guided meditation. 
I enjoy doing the guided meditation because I enjoy um, through the Calm app with the music and uh, um, the nature sounds. So what we want before you before you do that, let me ask you this question: Does meditation have anything to do with religion or? You know, you, our community, the black community has said, you know, you don't meditate. You worship in another God. You don't do yoga. You're worshiping another God. Please, please do some clarification for us. So it's been, um, it's been westernized mindfulness. Now, yoga, it does have its roots in Hinduism. And mindfulness originated in the East with Buddhism. So, yes, it has its roots, but now it's been so Americanized that when we do it, it's not really connected to that. So, for example, we have a mindfulness program in our school. We don't associate it with that. We don't use any of the vocabulary or the practices of that. We just focus on the breath in the movement. Mm -hmm. So breath in the movement is what we focus on. There is a way to practice mindfulness and just focus on breath and movement. And that's what we need to get us centered and focused, breath and movement. And that's mm -hmm. it. And you can do it, it, you know, sometimes you say, I don't have time to do it. It's, it takes too long. You can do it for as long as 20 minutes or you can do it for as short as five minutes. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. Sometimes, you know, some days I'm laying in my bed and I'm like, okay, let me take a couple deep breaths and, you know, do it there. And sometimes, <laughs> again, no judgment. And that's the other thing. There's no judgment. Yeah. And I don't know whether I'm transitioning from my morning prayers. Now, that's me adding my morning prayers because I'm yes. up every morning. Yes. And into my mindfulness you know so it's one to the other yeah can you can you do an example of mindfulness for us now okay i sure can uh i like my bell you know i have to have all the little bells and whistles so. yes i know all right all right so come to a seated position and i'm going to ring the bell just to let you know that we're starting our activity and I want you to follow the sound of it. And then I'm going to also ring it so that you know that we're coming out of it. Okay. Okay. All right. So come into your seat. Allow your spine to grow tall. Place your hands on your thigh. Roll your shoulder back and up. So if you're in your chair, Connect your feet to the floor. All right. So you have the option to close your eyes or you can gaze down. All right. I want you to bring your attention to your breath. Begin to notice the flow of your breath. Following your breath. When thoughts come up and you notice them, I want you to let them move through. Are you taking deep breaths in and blowing them out? Refocusing on your breath. Bringing an awareness to the crown of your head. Notice any sensations on your face, your eyes, your nose, relax your jaw. Bring awareness down to both arms. In your hands, notice the hands and any sensations you feel there. Sweeping awareness back through your legs and down to the toes. Scan your whole body. Come back to the rise and fall of your chest. Notice how you feel. 
One more deep breath. Slowly open your eyes when you hear the sound of the bell. Wow. And I was speeding through it. I wasn't going at a yeah, yeah, yeah. smooth pace because I know we're limited on time. And my voice was not, I wasn't in my Zen mode. That's okay. But you know what? We weren't, I, I still love Jesus. I, it ain't had nothing to do with Jesus. It had me getting my mind together. And you know what? Just that little bit, just, you know, well, I'll say, you know, act as if you have a string attached and your palms, lay your palm, your hands on your thigh and your palms up. And we do yoga nidra at work in the middle of the day. Wow. We go there and lay on our mats. We basically take a nap at work every day. And wow. you know, I say, ask for what you want. Because I remember reading Ariana Huffington's book, and she was talking about this was a, a few years back, talking about how everybody should take a nap at work. I said, I sure wish I could take. Because I come from a family of sleepers. We say we are good sleepers. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I wish I could take a nap at work. And it's not a formal nap, but we do. And I'm, right. I'm being funny, but we do the yoga at work, and it's just a moment to just relax. But one of the things that I haven't been doing is taking advantage of it. Yeah. So that's one thing yeah. that I plan to do. Thank you for doing that. That was wonderful. Pam said, we repeat so many things that we have no idea of its origin. You are absolutely right, Pam, origin. Uh, Danielle says, I love to practice uh, the practice of mindfulness. Dr. Bennett, can you do a scheduled Zoom session? Okay. Yes, I would love there, to. There you go. Wow. Yes. yes, yes. I want to say hello to uh, Ken. And if you are just joining us, we just went through a, a small little exercise of mindfulness. We it, it didn't convert me to anything else but Christian. So I'm still a Christian. So we still good. Um, my my heart probably thinks thanks me. My blood pressure probably thanks me for that for, yes. for taking some time to stop. Hey, Janice. Janice said that was so peaceful. See, come on, you all. We have been missing out because we've been misinformed. And so, uh, Sonia, what I would love for you all to do that we started, start all your meetings at work with that. Every wow. meeting, start your meetings, checking in, doing a body scan. That is a that is a great idea. And you know what? We can also we can even take it a step further. You all, when you get up in the morning, before you get out of bed, you better do a body scan, do a check. And there, I, wait, hold on. Yeah, we have cards. There are cards that you can use to help you if you don't know. You know, if you don't want to do it, that you can read. There are free resources online. There is so much out there. We do a leader talk session every Monday. We do, what is it, um, Mindful Mondays for Leaders. There are programs out there online, prepackaged. You don't have to do anything but click and download. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Dr. Taylor said that that was so re relaxing. You all, we have uh, been misinformed, which has led to us missing out. Uh, Danielle says, Dr. Bennett, do you have your own cards available for purchase? I do not, but what I do have is an ebook, a self care book, or an ebook. Okay, well, let's go there. Let's take a break and just talk about your services a little bit um, about uh, how can people connect with you? How can they, you know, uh, you have a coaching uh, component of your business. Talk a little bit about that. That's my baby and my love. So the mindfulness is something that I've just recently incorporated since the pandemic. But the coaching piece, that, that's my love because our students, prior to the to the pandemic, I was just working with women. But now, post-pandemic, I started incorporating young girls. I used to coach girls on the run. I, you work in the school system, you're familiar with that. And um, I used to mentor young girls. And what I'm finding, young girls are cutting. Mm -hmm. um, there are... Um, schools that have cutting clubs that is uh come close to my 
to me, I, I'm very intimately aware with some students that are doing that. And so what I'm doing is working with these students and their families with the mothers. I work with the mother and the daughter because that mother daughter relationship, that's mm -hmm. serious, you know. Um, and I don't work with a lot of clients I, because I want to make sure that I'm giving you the time. And, and because I work during the day, I only take one or two clients and I do that on the 90 day rotation. So if you go to my website, you will see the different coaching packages that we have. I have something where I work with girls that are in the age range between 10 and 13, because that's one group of girls where they're trying to deal with identifying who they are, trying to find their space and place. I have something where um, I deal with or work with um, older girls when they're in college and high school career college and readiness, trying to help them build those life skills and navigate those things. And they're different programs and they're on the website and then the older ones you know mm -hmm. once you turn 21 and above there are different things there just trying to find the authentic you i think mm -hmm. uh, on the website if you click authentic um finding the authentic you um you'll see it and then we have workshops and the reason we call it km bennett and associates i am not everybody's cup of tea mm -hmm. i may call you and say sonia I have a client and she needs a little more than I can provide. So I call mm -hmm. in other people that have the skill set and the expertise to reach them. Because it's really not about me. It's about getting these mm -hmm. students what they need. And particularly our girls. We always focus on our boys, but we've got to focus on these girls because yes. they have, did you all, I know you educators, did you see the U.S. Surgeon General's report, his advisory that came out on youth mental health? Yes. This startling. Yes. Yeah. How can people? I'm gonna put up the your handle as to this is for your Instagram. Yes. Yeah. So um, be on the lookout for her. Go ahead and tag her because she goes out and puts information out there as well. So you want to connect with her? Make sure you go out and like her on her Instagram. Yes, and um, Sonia and I just participated in a wilder, um, forest bathing. We went forest bathing, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? We went forest bathing two weeks forest, ago. Forest, did you, let me say it from the, like I'm from the South, forest. We're in the forest bathing. That's what we're doing. And it was a blast. It, it was really nice. So, you and know, I, I have to tell you, I would do it again. Oh, we will absolutely do it again. Um, as a matter of fact, you all, uh, Dr. Bennett and I have a have a, a, a day coming up next year that we're going to do a wellness day. So look out mm -hmm. for that um, um, so that you all can be a part of that. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, so um, it's not going to be any voodooism, but uh, we're going to do some uh, meditation and we're going to do some mindfulness. So and we're going to do some yoga because your girl will have her yoga certification by then. <laughs> Y'all, let me tell you this. So we at this at this retreat that we went to, you know, homegirl out of shape. I'm out of shape. So this girl, they were doing some yoga and the girl had to come over, and give me some special uh, support. She told me she even told me she said, you ain't got to do that pose. Don't even do just focus on your breathing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The girl. I can't remember her name. The girl that led the class, but she yeah. was so good. I went yeah. on her Instagram and I started patting myself on the back. I said, Oh, I hung in there with her. She was awesome. Yeah, she was all over. I was like, mm, I'm mm -hmm. really out of shape because I can't do that being right there. I'm just going to do this right here and I'm going to breathe. The girl next to us was wonderful. She was absolutely wonderful for beginners. And I think we need to have her as a part of our day because she's for beginners. And I think she would be great. Go ahead. And that's what I want people to do. Just be curious and go. Don't worry about the perfection or, oh, that's not for me. Just try it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know what they what was when they said that we were gonna go out and do some forest bathing, I was like, What the what the and listen, all it is was we were walking through a path, some trees were there, and we were focused on what we were doing. Now, let's be I, honest, 
You didn't do all of the forest bathing. You did not take your shoes off. No, I didn't take my shoes off. No, no. But I, you know what? I still think I got what they got though. Yeah. Yeah. But so, so be open. Uh, it may be something you've never heard before or done before. But you know what? Nobody's push gonna push you beyond your comfort zone. You can say no. Mm -hmm. Um now I when she said the forest thing, I was like, now what the devil is this? But we were walking through a path. That's all it was. Um, and it it was wonderful. You thought about the leaves that you were walking oh, over. It was beautiful. It was for me, you know, some people were focused on the ground. Some were focused on the tree. Like your attention was drawn to the earth in whatever way it was calling. Yes. And for me, it was the sun and the sky. And I was able to move at my own pace. And I felt like the message for me, just do you and just follow your speed and and don't try and worry about anybody else it's no judgment that's the biggest it's no judgment go at your own pace yes it's, it's it it was just amazing but um you know we only have like 20 minutes left oh you've been talking a lot <laughs> well it's a little bit you know you know our, our thing is about self-care and it's not selfish Talk a little bit about the importance of self-care. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about get a mani petty. I'm talking about saying no to some things, putting yourself first. Uh, talk a little bit about the importance of self-care. So <laughs> if you don't take care of yourself, you will deteriorate. Yeah. That's the bottom line. We, as women, we take care of everybody else. We take care of children, we take care of colleagues, co-workers, parents, dogs, cats, and everybody else, supervisors, but we don't take care of ourselves. We think, yeah. oh, I got my nails done today. Oh, oh, look at my nails. And like, that's enough. Mm -hmm. You have to look at all of those dimensions of well-being. Look at the physical, look at the emotional, look at the mental. and. A lot of people, there's a lot of stigma with mental, with the mental piece, the mental aspect. You know, you talk to, if you talk to five people, more than likely three of them are, well, I don't fool with that. I don't, I don't talk to a psychiatrist or a therapist or a coach. And coaching is not therapy, two different things. But you need to process with somebody before you have a problem. Yeah. So talking to a therapist before there is a problem. That's self-care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Calling your therapist for preventative, mm -hmm. that's self-care. When you're doing it after the fact, you know, that's triage. <laughs> that's crisis. <laughs> um, and the thing is, you don't want to wait until you have a break. You don't want to wait until you have a flat tire to go get a new tire. You know what I mean? You want to yeah. do that daily maintenance on yourself. And a massage and all those things that could be a form of self care. There's some other things that you have to do. Eating right now, we can eat junk every now and again. But for the most part, you got to take care of your body. You only get mm -hmm. one. You mm -hmm. only get one. Mm -hmm. So that's what a coach will do for you. They will give you an accountability plan, but you nobody knows you better than you do. Mm -hmm. But what a coach will do is kind of be your guide on the side and help you figure out how to practice better self care so that you can reach the goals that you want you know what i heard somebody say this is this is a super old saying they say pressure bust a pipe better come on now so if you don't get rid of some of that pressure mm -hmm. you're gonna explode yeah yeah and 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 that is where that angry to me Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, and there is some research because I actually that's what I did my dissertation on um, that angry black woman comes from. Um, we in society, we have been um, socialized to believe and see other women as soft and gentle and maternal. Mm -hmm. But 
we have to move in a such a way that we have to be strong and hard working and robust and have magic. I don't have no doggone magic. Nothing is magical. No, this is hard doggone work. Absolutely. And, and I better know when to stop and take care of myself. Know when to hold them, when when to fold them, and when to walk away. Yeah. Come on, Kenny. Rogers. And, and I believe we talked about when to walk away. <laughs> Won't he do it? Won't he do it? The many people believe a therapist is something extra. Uh, mm -hmm. Remind folks that therapy is all uh, is also covered by insurance. Let me tell you something. Uh, Melanie says black girl magic is real. Let me tell you something. When I was going through my divorce, That's my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> now you when can't I tell her she don't have no black girl magic. <laughs> But when she get on the floor and she starts snapping those fingers, that's, uh -huh. that's her black girl magic. <laughs> when I was going through my divorce, my counseling uh, was just as important as my budget for my food. Mm -hmm. Food counseling was just as important as me going to Cub Foods, getting my getting my my weekly uh, grocery list. During that's the, how important it was, it was for me. They gave it to you for free during the pandemic. So they don't, nothing is free. Mm -mm. So if they gave it to you for free. It must have been critical. People, I, people don't realize. And then sometimes when we don't deal with our issues, we pass that stuff down to our kids. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why they act as like, because you did it. They, it came right. from you. And the thing is, happiness attracts happiness. So you cannot bring. A light that happiness and that lightness into your world if you're not giving it all. Mm -hmm. Happiness attracts happiness. Somebody need to type that. Happiness attracts. Oh, girl, you got me want to preach. Come on, sister. Happiness. Mm. That was a B and Mary Jane thing. You know, I love me some B and Mary Jane. You know, um, I was putting up post-its before that show came out all over my mirror. When I got divorced, I did that. My son said, mom, is everything? Because I had post-its, big post-its all, all over my mirror. He got out. He's like, do we need a 1013 or something? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you got a 10 like, he, oh, my son, Chris, is so smart. He's off the charts. He's like, you OK? Do I need to call somebody? I'm like, no, I don't have goals, Chris. So let me tell y'all, if you don't know, 1013 is what a social worker signs uh, when they need to, when you need to be admitted uh, for an evaluation. And it's good, I think, for 48 or 72 hours, somewhere like that, mm -hmm. against your will, yeah. And they're done by LCSWs and other uh, licensed professionals, and I have the ability to do that. So don't mess with me, because I 1013. Hey, <laughs> Melanie, thank you for joining. Uh, she said, uh, because I'm happy. Uh, Nikki says, happiness attracts happiness. Um, I give you two thumbs up that Renee has given. I can't really tell. Uh, thank you all for joining. And so I want to say hello to uh, Deborah Anthony, uh, Melanie Cummins. Thank you all for joining tonight. This is a great conversation. Is Ashley on? Nope, I haven't seen Ashley yet. Okay, because she is the epitome of Zen. So let me ask you, how does a person get started with their wellness? How, what are some of the small things that they can do, you know, if they're just starting, you, you want to take control of their life? You start with a self-care plan. Um, you can get one offline. You can work with a professional. Um, I, you know, if it's in your budget, I would suggest working with a professional so that they can help you monitor and adjust your goals accordingly but if that's not in your budget good old good dr google go online mm -hmm. get one off there and it'll have all the dimensions that you need for all of the areas and start small because mm -hmm. what'll happen is we'll say okay and i'm guilty of this too i have all these eight dimensions of wellness that i want to jump into and i want to be i want every one of them to be at 100 by Friday and it's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will overwhelm yourself, you'll be disappointed and you'll stop. So if one of your areas, so for example, one of my areas um, is exercise. Mm -hmm. 
my goal is two days a week. And I'm sure Pamela Jimerson cannot believe that because I am a, oh, I'm going hard. It's seven days a week um, for exercise. It's just making sure I have something green on my plate, some type of vegetable. You know, I'm not going to cut. It makes no sense for me. I know sugar is poison. I've done, you know, I've taken all the class. I've done, done all the research for it. I, I have a certificate to prove it. But guess what? I will never give up sugar. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a house built in sugar. I mean, I consume sugar my whole life. I will never give it up. But I can do it in moderation. Yes. So just start little by little because you you will defeat you'll be feel defeated all the time and you'll feel bad about yourself. And then that will continue to hurt you. Um there's this book, um thing 10 things mentally healthy people do. I think that's what it's called. Um okay. we'll we don't have to look. Yeah. We'll find it. I want to give out accurate information. I don't want to give out misinformation now. That's but, it. Hey Kanye things that you can do just little steps but those steps are based on an assessment and that's where you need you need to take an assessment and identify those critical areas particularly if it's a health issue start where you're going to get the most impact so if you say you're a diabetic you want to start where you can get the biggest bang for your buck and you can do something that's going to reverse a medical situation yes get the cosmetic stuff you know let's do the medical first what I have found, a, and my insurance has a coach, a wellness coach that calls mm -hmm. every quarter. And she was asking me what I was going to do differently. Um, and I told her, you know what? I'm starting with water. Mm -hmm. I'm increasing my water intake because I know that I don't drink enough water. Uh, I told her I want to drink 18 ounces before I leave in the morning. Um, drink 36 ounces by mid-morning. And then another 36 ounces in the afternoon of just simple things. And, and I also have a, a app on my phone every 45 minutes. It goes off and it tells me to stand up or move for five minutes. Just the little, little things. Um, and sleep. And, yes. Can I tell you? Sleep, that's probably the number one, I will say, the research is saying right now, and I'm sorry, I, I said something else. The research now they're saying sleep is the number one that you should do. If you have to change just one little thing, do sleep first. But that's if sleep is your issue. Yes. And for me, that would be because sleep it is like torture if you're not getting enough sleep. You have brain fog. You can't make you don't make good decisions if you're sleep deprived. You know, we used to torture people with sleep deprivation you know wow. so by we i mean other people um <laughs> i was not in the middle you know but never mind you know but, <laughs> uh tanisha just, thank you for joining us tonight um so you all if you have any questions you need to go ahead and place them in the chat we have about five minutes um i cannot believe that we've been talking for 55 minutes it's and there's so many there resources uh oh what is it come on tell your resources well these are just books you can buy this is a magazine the mindful journal you can get that online um i think for six copies of this magazine you can get um i think it's 29 dollars for six there are little books that you can get that you can read um, that has little meditations in it. Um, you can go to, what's that? Little, it's not a dollar store. It's like that zero below. What's that store? Uh, five below. Yeah, that's it. You can get books like this. And I just buy a bunch of these. And they have really good books in there that are meditation books and gratitude. Gratitude, that's the other one. Find something to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. and just share it with someone, write a letter to someone, call mm -hmm. someone and tell them you appreciate them. Little acts of kindness or, real kindness or um, random gratitude, they say that that will help increase your um, happiness quota. I'm trying to think. So, what someone said, Can you share your book list in the chat? I sure can. 
Oh, well, not in the chat. I don't know how to get in that chat. Can we send that? <laughs> now, you're, you're doing too much. <laughs> if whoever that person is does not, they don't know me. No, they don't know you. Uh, Dr. Taylor said, great job, ladies. Um, uh, so informative. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Melanie said, um, I'm grateful for smart and beautiful leaders like the both of you. Oh, thank, you. Oh, thank you. You bring a you bring a whole entourage with you. <laughs> um, so what I will get her to do is I will get her to share her list. I mean, create a list for me, and um, if you send me your email address, I will send it to you. How about that? Yeah, because there are some really good ones out there. So You're if you if you text me, text me your email address, um, or um, go online under in Facebook, I will send it to you. Dr. Bennett, please share more of your resources. How do we contact uh, connect with you? So we talked about that a little earlier. I will share that again. Um, thank you for that reminder. This is how you um, connect with her. This is her website. This is her Instagram. Um, so make sure you go ahead and follow her now so that you won't forget it. Go ahead. I was going to say, if anyone is interested in a youth mental health or an adult mental health first aid class for their church, their school, I am offering those. All you have to do is cover the cost of your books. I'm not charging for those. I'm doing um, three, because Sonya had me on here. I, I told her I will do three adult and three youth. Who have the first three people to ask for the youth, the first three people to ask for the adult. I will do those um, free of charge. You just have to pay for your um, training materials, which I think is $20 for the book. But the books are phenomenal you will continue to use them because suicide is the second leading cause of death in our young people and african-american children are starting to outnumber others so don't think it's not us because it is uh danielle said i got three for the youth <laughs> you have to have a minimum of five people too make sure you have a minimum of five people for your class so if you are interested in that, you all, um, so if we can get five people, she'll do a class. Um, I'm hosting one for my mom friends. Uh, sign me up. Okay, Danielle. All right. Gotcha. So maybe, you know what? Maybe we can get a class going. So we can talk right. online about that and we can make that happen. All right. um, I already have a place in mind that we can hold the class. I'll pay for the place. You can do it online. Oh, do it online. You know, I'm not over COVID like that. Oh. <laughs> no, you could do it face to face or online, whichever you prefer. So, I'm if you are interested in that, you all, again, text me um, so that we can get that class. Hopefully, we can do it. Um, we'll talk about a date. So, just just get that information for me. Get that information to me if you are serious about it. Um, and because, like Dr. Bennett said, kids are taking their lives, Pretend and it's not. It's 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 the black kids. Mm -hmm. And I think some of us are saying, oh, they're just doing it for attention. Well, then give, them. give them the attention if they're trying to get it. Baby, it's more than just attention. Mm -hmm. It's what, when they tell you uh, that they're cutting themselves to stop the pain. Yeah. When you have elementary babies saying trying to commit suicide. That's a problem. And I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling oh, you yeah. what I know. He had second graders trying to hang themselves in the back of the classroom, teachers sitting in the front. So in a situation where he hung himself in his backyard. I mean. Yeah. So it's 801. I didn't see any other questions. Dr. Bennett, I am going to give you the floor with the last words. I just want to say thank you for having me. If um, you don't listen to anything else I said, please take care of yourself. Check on your children. Talk to your children. Make sure you know how to identify understand and respond to the signs of suicide and drug abuse in your children 
your family members, your friends, and just be able to help each other and take care of each other. Check on each other. Our seniors and our children, I call them our bookends, are really suffering in this pandemic with isolation. People need to feel this connectedness. We have lost that and we need to check on them. So thank you. This has been absolutely amazing. What a way to end the year. This is my last show for the year, but I'm telling you, I'm coming back in January. I'm going to blow your mind. I got a couple of things on my sleeve. I'm so excited. I got a new website that's coming. So, hey, it's going to be great. Uh, 2022 is going to be phenomenal. I have Can great things planned. Huh? Can I challenge you to start early and start with a mindfulness meditation? before every show I, you can all right i'm gonna need some more exercise i need some more practice though um but i was doing that today at my seat after i came back from from the school where the student had died and and just a lot of stuff going on i said well you know what let me sit down and get myself mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and i and i went on youtube and i found a 10 minute mindfulness and i just sat there and listened to the man talk Yep. And did what he said do. And I, I felt better. Positive affirmations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember, I told you, and I know I'm going on. This is the last thing. I told you to put those little stickers around your window and start saying those things to yourself. Yep. I am the righteousness of God. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens right. me. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. Come on. I'm not a borrower. I'm a lender. Mm -hmm. So you start saying those things. I will not to punch anybody today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all again. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. And I will see you all next year. But you know what? I may pop on. So just, just keep a lookout. You never know what will happen, my boy. All right, y'all. Love you all. Thank you all for following me. Thank you for an absolutely amazing year. Um, this has been wonderful. I am Sonia Cruel. I am the transition coach. Um, and I have Dr. Bennett with me, who's the wellness coach. We are excited um, about what's ahead. So y'all take care and we will talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye.